Good morning, children. Good morning, sir. I am Teacher Jeffney, and I am your teacher for today. Before anything else, uh, let me show you a picture. What do you see in that picture? About animals. It's all about animals, sir. Animals. Very good. Very good. Uh, what do you think is our lesson for today? Miss John? Our lesson for today is all about the different kinds of animals. Very good. Uh, our lesson for today is about the common characteristic of animals for classification. We all know that we have millions of different animals in the planet. It differs in size and in body structures. For classifying animals, there are two classifications of animals. These are vertebrates and invertebrates. So, in invertebrates, these animals with backbones or bony skeleton. These are the examples of animals who are, which are vertebrates. And also, for invertebrates, these are animals without backbones. And these are the examples of invertebrates animals. This is the frog, the octopus, the butterfly, and the snails. There are five major groups of vertebrates. These are mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fishes. And also, for, for invertebrates, there are seven composed of uh, five or groups. These are the sponges, the cholenterites, or cnidarians, the flatworms, roundworms, segmented worms, mollusca, and arthropods. Good morning once again, children. Morning, ma. Okay. For the continuation of our discussion, this morning, I am going to tackle about the vertebrates, the five major groups of vertebrates. As all we know, vertebrates are group of animals that have a, what? Backbones. Correct. A group of animals that have backbone. All we know that the functions of our backbone is, first, it gives our body a proper structure. And second, it protects our spinal cord and it is allow in allowing us to have a flexible in the way of our moving. So let's the let's discuss the five major groups of vertebrates and their characteristics. Let's start first first in mammals. So okay, wait. Okay, mammals. The mammals are the most dominant form of animal to the class of mammalia. The mammals is the most dominant form of animals found in almost all types of habitats. They can live mostly on land and they give birth to the young, except the platypus and the hechedna. So, the mammals have mammary gland to feed their younger ones. The body covering of mammals is through their pore and their hair. The hair serves as the hair serves a variety of functions. First is the hair serves as the insulation against cold of the of the mammals. The second one is it protects for their delicate, delicate skin. And the third, it serves as the camouflage of camouflage against the predators. And their breathing organ, they use lungs for their breathing. And the examples of mammals are humans, horses, tarsiers, and monkeys. Did you understand class? Yes, teacher. Okay, very good. And now let's proceed to the class of avis or the birds is one. So the birds is is a warm-blooded animals. The most important features of a bird is the ability to fly. And their their four limbs are modified into wings. 
The feeder, the feeders of the bird help them to fly. And there are several functions of feeders. It first, it protects birds from water and cold. Second, it helps in flying to find food and to avoid some of the predators. The third is to protect birds from various poor of the fluctuating conditions of the environment. So this is the examples of birds, the parrot, the peacock, the duck, and the duck. So now let's proceed to the to the group of to the class of reptiles. Or the class of the reptilia. One. This is the examples of the class of reptilia. To the snake, iguana, alligator, and tortoise. So the reptiles is an ectothermic animal, which means they get their body, body heat from external sources. Reptiles is the longest, longest species on the planet. For did you know plus that the the tortoise can live more than 150 years? No, ma'am. Okay, now you know and alligators can live nearly 70 years. Their body is covered by scales. And the functions of the scales of the reptiles, first, it protects reptiles from the loss of body moisture, with, which help them, which help them stay healthy. And scales also serves as a camouflage. And it serves also as their signal, and it serves also as their water transport of the reptile. Most reptiles have backbone, except the snake. The reptiles also in this group of reptiles is the air breathing vertebrates that have internal fertilization. So let's proceed to the amphibians or the class of amphibia. It has an ectothermic animal. It is an ectothermic animal that have thin and slimy skin. So this is the examples of amphibians. The salamander, the newt, the toad, and the frog. And remember class that the amphibian is, is a cold-blooded animal. They use their gills for their breathing and they lay eggs that hatch and they can mostly be found on land and water. Amphibians have web feet that help them swim more, more efficiently and they possess double channel carrying system and green roots of their retina to discriminate use and and pedicillate the tip. Amphibian skin has various functions, such as first, it serves the, the skin of the amphibian, it, it serves them for their respiration and it serves as osmoregulation. Osmoregulation meaning it means the process of which the amounts of water and specific solutes within the body of an organism. And this time we will proceed to the class of pieces or the class of fish. The examples is the shark, the cod, the catfish, the stingray, stingray. The fish has scales and the their breathing organ, they use their gills for their use their gills for breathing. And they consider they have they are cold blooded animals most they mostly lay eggs and they mo they live in water. So the fish the class of fish is characterized Characterized by by their skeleton, which is composed primarily of bone, 
rather than cartilage such as the shark and they use their the presence of gills allows them to breathe oxygen in water and the scale of the fish defend them from ectropers, parasites, and external injuries providing ex providing providing external protection. And also the gills also allows fish to effort effortlessly move horizontally and vertically. That's all for my discussion. Did you understand my discussion class? Yes, yes teacher. Okay, very good. Take note that warm-blooded animals have internally controlled body temperatures, while cold-blooded animals have body temperatures that change with, in, with environment. And that's the end of my discussion. Teacher Cindy, We'll continue our discussion. Good morning, everyone. Again, invertebrates are the types of animals that don't have the backbone or um, skeleton. So, invertebrates are composed of several major phyla or groups. Number one, um, sponge. So, sponge are the um, simple liquid um, aquatic animals that belong to the um, pelomphoric ground. They have the porous body structures. And our our cover feeders mainly build in food by covering water through their bodies. Sponge gain in virtue shape, size, um, colors, and they play important roles in marine ecosystem. For example, sponge, um, plus sponge, then most of the most flower basket. And then the second one is um silent trees or night diver. So, Nidarians are a group of invertebrates that includes jellyfish, um, hydra, corals, sea and animal. They have specialized um, stinging cells called nido nidocytes that they use for capturing waves or defend themselves. Nidarians exhibit fragile symmetry and they have some like body structures like um, tentacles rounding a um, septal mouth. And then the third one is platforms. So platforms are also known as platelmitis. Platelmitis are a group of invertebrates that have um, a flattened body shape. They can be found in both um, fresh water and marine environments. Platforms include spaces like um, state worms, Tanaria, never go. Um, some, platform, some platforms are free living while others are parasitic. And then um, for the third one is round worms. So round worms are um, Roundworms are a diverse group of invertebrates that have a cylindrical body shape. They can be found in a wide range of habitats, including seed oil, um, water, even with acid parasites in animals. Roundworms are known for their ability to survive in virtuous environment and their role in nutrient cycling. So, like Ascar, Ascaris, um, the diet. Like Ascaris, Hilaira, and Worms, and Kid Worms. And then the next one is Segmented Worms. So, Segmented Worms are, um, are a group of invertebrates that have a um, segmented body. They include, they include earthworms, leeches, marine worms. Um, segmented Worms will have will, a well developed um, bubble and exhibit. The lateral symmetry. They play important um, roles in soil health, nutrient cycling, and in and as in food resources for other animals. And then the next is mollusca. So um, mollusca are soft-bodied 
invertebrates that typically have a hard uh, shell. They include snails, um, palms, slug, scallop, octopus, and squid. Mollusca have a um, muscular food for movement and have also um, tentacles or other special structures. They are found in both aquatic, um, aquatic and terrestrial habitat. And then, um, arthropods. So, arthropods are the large group of invertebrates that includes insects, um, shrimp, frog, spider, bee, and little scorpion and elephant. So, they have a segmented body, joint appendages, and exoskeleton made of chicken. Now, class, as what I have said, there are two classifications of animals. These are vertebrates and invertebrates. And for vertebrates, these animals are with backbones or in the skeleton. And for invertebrates, these animals without backbones or in the skeleton. And for vertebrates, there are five major of vertebrates groups. These are the mammals, the birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fishes. And for invertebrates, these uh, this animals are composed of several phyla or groups. These animals have seven, seven major. Number one is the sponge. Number two, quadrates or cnidarians. Flat worms, round worms, segmented worms, mollusca, and arthropods. Now, class, I want you to group into two. This will be the group one, and this will be the group two. And all you have to do is to pick up pictures here in the board. Uh, you're going to pick one invertebrate and one vertebrate. And you're going to, to classify what animals are those and how to take good care of that choose animals. I need one uh, representative to each group. Morning, everyone. We are the group one, and we pick the dog. The dog belongs to the group of vertebrates because it gives birth to their young, and mostly they they have a mammary gland to feed their 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 younger ones. And in we in the invertebrates we we choose butterflies. Okay, by giving importance of the animals, we should take care of them. We give we should give them uh, proper food and we should love them as our own. Thank you. So, I choose the zebra. Zebra are belongs to birds because um, they give birth. And then for invertebrates, I choose crab. So, for me, we have to take care of them because they, uh, they are part of it. And now, group 2 and group 1 are very good. So, let's give them a clap. A Superman clap. Do you know how to do a Superman clap? No, teacher. Like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. Superman! Okay, let's do it. One, two, three. One, two, three. Superman! Let's go!